Next up is our first ever musical act we've ever had at a Skepticon. So I'm very excited to introduce George Robb. Thank you so, so very much. My goodness, thanks for hanging out. Sorry about the technical garbage that we had to deal with. Uh, my fault, not, but I'll say it's my fault because I'm a gentleman. Come on in, have a seat. Come on in, have a seat. Come on in, have a seat. Thank you for hanging out. This is awesome. This is such a great event. I can't tell you how great this is and how enthused I am to be here playing for you fine people. Let's get started, shall we? When you wish upon a star makes no difference. For my next number, I'd like to do the first track off of my latest album. This is called God Is Not Great. This was written for Christopher Hitchens. This 21st century man can tend to get irate On a scale from one to one Less than some, it's no fun Pounding my fists at the gates God is not great I'll plainly state It's not too late Maybe it is For all the power he's got Apparently it's a lot I find it all obscene Quite enough of this bad play Yet they stay day after day Less logic, more latrine God's way to me I'll calmly scream And cause a scene and in a way, it's a shame That some folks would remain in a box And ignore what they say he made us for Enough of a chance A new song needs a new dance I'll scream till I'm hoarse Race is lost but jockeys whip Though their grip starts to slip Never questioning the source Gods know of course Christian or Norse Sauron or Force to me it's all the same God is not great Thank you Levels are okay, you can hear everything all right? Guitar's good, yes? Happiness? Guitar, more guitar, less guitar? Sing better? Whatever you want to yell is totally cool More cowbell, uh... I've got a fever, yes. So my name is George Hrob, that's H as in Hrob, R as in is, A as in prime, and B as in blah, 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 blah. It's very easy to remember it that way. So if you're interested in knowing more about me, just Google me and uh, we'll be very close afterwards. Here is uh, another song off my uh, last record. Uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the happier songs I've ever written. This sort of deals with our place in the universe and the way things roll, the way things work, and it's a happy, positive message of hope, I think. This is called, Everything Alive Will Die Someday. <laughs> Just remember, everything alive will die someday, and that's okay. It's the great equating factor in the world Like some desiccated tractor We all run out of gas This life can't last 
Cause everything alive will die someday I used to worry that my folks would someday die Cause that meant if they could then that meant so could I Too young to handle this morose philosophy I'd rather get high my way climbing up a tree than staring at the huge small world I could survey I wondered what it'd feel like on that final day Then calculated the heartbeats left in my lot Then realized I'd best relax and just enjoy the time I've got And I'd remember that everything alive will die someday That's okay From the single cellular to grandiose Seems we're all destined to be toast to every leaf, bush, shrub, and tree. We'll cease to be, cause everything alive will die someday. Yes, get those phones up in the air, I love it. <laughs> every empire crumbles, every mammoth stumbles to the ground, ally and enemy. Both kick the bucket equally And in this truth there lies a fact If you ignore those who distract You might come to realize The fairness of unfairness is in everything's demise And you'll remember That everything alive will die someday And that's hard to say but to me it's more a blessing than a curse Is this a chorus or a weird verse? Every hand that's ever writ Will up and quit Cause everything alive will die someday But in the meantime I get to see you smile And that makes it Okay for a while To look into your eyes is worth The eventual demise of Earth and of every living cell What the hell We get to be like Deborah and Clive For a few days Let's all remember That everything alive will die someday But let me say you shouldn't do just whatever you will Don't ever cause any ill and historic reversal Don't you know This is the only chance you've got It ought to mean an awful lot This is the show and not some rehearsal Those who speak of an extra inning Imply this is just a beginning but there's no prize you will be winning Your existence is enough of a reward to keep you grinning Or at least it should be So I come from uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, of all places. Yes, there actually is a Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, named on Christmas Eve of 1742, because the weather was so shitty, they were like, what can we do to cheer up these poor people that have buckles on their clothing? Let's name it Bethlehem. Oh, that'll be great, because it's Christmas Eve, fantastic. We actually have a Hotel Bethlehem. It's called the Hotel Bethlehem. And I haven't got the balls to do it yet, but one of these Christmas Eves, I'm gonna go there and be like, what do you mean you got no room? What do you, what do you, what do you mean? Because it's a Joseph joke, you see? With the, perfect. <clears throat> actually, Bethlehem is lovely. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's called the Christmas City. And people actually drive from miles around to cancel their Christmas cards at the Bethlehem post office so that your Christmas cards come from Bethlehem. There's a special line at the post office just for that. I love it. It's very, very cool. Christmas is my favorite pagan holiday, so it's always fun. Um, this has nothing to do with Christmas, although maybe slightly, but uh, this is a song I wrote for my niece and nephew, who at the time were uh, uh, seven and eight, I guess, uh, and they're still, they're still kids. 
Uh, but this, this was, I was asked to write a song for a children's album, and I didn't know if it was going to be a children's, like an album for children, or an album about childhood, and they didn't know either. So they just said, write what you want to write. So I wrote this. This is called When I Was Your Age. When I was your age, the phone was tied to the wall with a kinky, twisty, three and a half foot cord. It's hard to believe, but it had a ring that could not be turned off or ignored. You couldn't choose the sound of the ring, it was just the sound we called the phone. We'd never heard of a ringtone. When I was your age, our video games looked nothing like the illustration on the box. All of the graphics consisted of nothing more than simple lines and dots. Missiles were just a few pixels and the jungle swinging guy was a stick figure. Nothing bigger. When I was your age. When I was your age. When I was your age, we had this stuff called film. You would stick in a camera before you took a shot. And then you had to wait like a month until you could tell what pictures you got. You would hand the film to a guy in a parking lot who lived in a booth. Yeah, it's the truth. When I was your age, you had to wait till the movie was either in the theater or on TV. If you wanted adventure, you couldn't rent adventure, you just had to wait and see. And once you were watching, you couldn't stop or pause or even try to rewind. But hey, we didn't mind. When I was your age. When I was your age. You see me as a grown-up Singing from the stage I guess you can't believe I was ever your age I was your age When I was your age I like watching Star Wars But I hear you like Star Wars more than me I wanted to be Indiana Jones, and Dr. Jones is who you aspire to be. And I loved playing with Legos, and Legos are what you currently build and rearrange. I guess some things never change. When I was your age, I didn't like doing homework, but when it was finished, it always felt real good. I didn't like brushing my teeth, but I brushed my teeth because Bert and Ernie said that I should. I didn't like listening to mom, though I knew deep inside it was the right thing to do. And hey, so do you. You know what's true before you can say boo. You'll be my age too. Hi, I'm here to talk to you about even numbers. Do you ever have to put things into two piles? Do you ever have to split up a bunch of items between you and your friend? Do you enjoy using terms like every other and even-handed and balanced? Well then what you're thinking about are even numbers. Numbers like 6, 24, 8, 92, 16, 100, 102, 544, 10, 2366, 2. Yes, even numbers are the numbers that provide uniformity, order, and balance to your everyday life. We know that you use numbers all the time, and you have a choice as to which numbers you decide to use. We hope you know that when it counts, you can count on even numbers. Even numbers. Completely divisible. 
paid for by the 246 Action Committee for the Advancement of Even Numbers. You are an innovator. You are always looking at things differently. You need to be pushing yourself and everyone around you at all times. The well-beaten path is just too easy. Balance is something for clowns on unicycles. You're no clown. You are on the edge, and you're anything but divisible. Odd numbers were there when we stormed the beaches at Normandy. Odd numbers helped figure out the ratios needed to send men to the moon. Odd numbers bring together the uneven, disparate components of what makes this country great and allows for the odd to stand out and shine. You know, maybe it's not popular to think there are some situations where you can't be totally even-handed, but we were never about popularity. Odd numbers, three of a kind. As sure as the star-bellied sneeches butter the underside of their toast, all things being equal, the simplest answer's worth most. Don't believe in Vishnu, Buddha, Ron Popeil, or the Holy Ghost. Just consider these words, and that ship of life you're sailing on might not smash into the coast. Watching every channel, all that I do is see Oceans of gullible conformity Oh, I've had enough all the smiles and all the teeth and all the nods. And I've had my fill of promises from magic rays to painless perfect bots. Watching every image that flashes before me, I can't believe the level of spirituality. Oh, I've had enough of the geeks who have claimed to have found the way. I hope that guy watching will just take one sec and consider what I have got to say. When I say, think for yourself, little man, don't let them tell you that they have the plan, cause everyone's the same. Choking back the nervous hand, and what they're selling to you, you shouldn't be buying. Think for yourself, little girl. Tell you how to run your world Cause everyone's the same Choking back that nervous hurl And if they tell you they ain't Well, they're just lying, yeah They're just lying Reading all the pages in the standard magazines I wonder if they realize what all that small print means Oh, you need a microscope To read about the no-fault guarantee and to see that these results not typical. And this offers void in any state that's spelt with an E. Watching all the people place bet after amazing bet. I wonder if they realize their misplaced raison d'etre. Oh, but they don't want to hear about the odds and statistic A and statistic B. Because they've got a brother who's got a friend who's got a mailman who had a cousin who says, hey, this stuff always works for me. That's why I say, think for yourselves, little folks. Check one, two, one, two, is this thing on? Hey, these are the jokes. Beware of the jerks who don't like jabs and pokes. If you can't laugh at yourself, you just end up crying. Think for yourself, little friend. Is it you that they like, or is it the money you spend? Beware of the dudes. Who'd sooner break than bend And to question anything at all It's just like dying Yeah, to them it's just like dying Listening to the radio from my comfy cozy chair No one seems to question all the claims out on the air Oh, I'm so tired Of the offers that are so damn tremulous and I can't conceive the cash of creeps and cretins who continue to be so uncannily credulous. Well, that's why I say, think for yourselves, everyone. 
Don't believe what is said Put your stock in what's done Insist on all the facts And then add up your own sum Or else the punch you receive It won't be Hawaiian or Think for yourselves One and all don't jump to conclusions Don't beat up Peter if you're pissed at Paul Don't fall for anything, yeah And please don't drop the ball Just be sure to do your who, what, where, when, and why and Just be sure to do your who, what, where, when, and why and Just be sure to do your who, what, where, when, and why and Yeah, Hawaiian A little atheist gospel song or a little gospely atheist song there for you. Odd numbers would like to have you believe that there's something too rigid or square about even numbers. That somehow even numbers have never been on the forefront or the cusp of anything. Talk about odd thinking. Even numbers have always been there since the very first couple decided to join, unifying their oddness into a unique compound, equally divisible whole. Even numbers don't feel the need to brag about what's been accomplished with them, since pretty much everything's been accomplished with them. What exactly are odd numbers compensating for? We're not ones to judge. Maybe we're just too balanced for that. And if odd numbers are going to hold that against us, and maybe they're really more odd than we thought. Even numbers. 2468. That's who we appreciate. Paid for by the Society for the Advancement of Even Numbers. You've probably heard a lot of things being said about which kind of numbers were where and who's accomplished what. It seems to me, though, that even numbers just aren't facing the facts. FACT! Being divisible is not solely the realm of the even number. There are plenty of decimal places that would have something to say about that. Why do even numbers find it so easy to ignore them? FACT! Triangles, pentagons, and five-lined stars are just as valid and stable a shape as any square or rectangle. Leaving these shapes out of the debate is again excluding a huge segment of the odd population. Not so even-handed now, is it? FACT! The square root of any compound multiple can just as easily be odd as even, and yet the squares get to label the nomenclature. Where's the fairness in that? UNFAIR! Unfair. Sure, some odd numbers are hard to work with. We think that maybe they're just a little bit more independent and we wouldn't have it any other way. Odd numbers. Vigilant against backpedaling by pedalism. Some girls are born with looks to kill. Some girls are born with intimate skills. Some girls are just concerned with fun. Some girls are like an SNL skit at a quarter to one. All I need is a two-sided coin. She better satisfy my brain as well as my loins. She better wear a tight dress and have a mind that's strong. I want brains and a body. Is that so wrong? When she shows me her brain cells, then my pride suddenly swells like a Botticelli chick. She's on the half shell, but she likes getting nasty like Tori Wells. Brains, body, both. Brains, body, both. Brains, body, both. It's scary, a dictionary is very good to try to retain and impress. But I also don't mind a vinyl dress in which she's watching Jeopardy, she never has to guess. You may ask why I'm specific. Well, a dumb girl's effect is soporific. I need brains and a bot that are both terrific, like a domain name that's case specific. She's the queen of conversation, a panel member on face the nation, but she gets on all fours without hesitation, and she's got the best seat without a reservation. Brains, body, bone. 
Brains, body, bone. Brains, body, bone. She reads Baudelaire. She drinks Perrier. I like the smell of her hair and her underwear. Because her derriere goes from here to there. She's like two floor toms, right? Kick and snare. She goes to museums like Whitney to learn about the pigment at the installation. She also knows S. Morgan Stern is a figment of imagination. She always puts Horace before Descartes. She can make a point like George Surratt. She can choke the chicken like Julia Child. And she knows how to make my Oscar Wilde. Hot brains, body bones. Brains, body bones. She got brains and a brick house spot to behold. She knows Effie's iron and AU's gold. She got the origami hands that can flex and fold. Love for sale, I'm sold, I'm sold. Boys, don't be afraid of a high IQ. A girl with smarts knows what to do. She reads Masters and Johnson and Kinsey too. Do I lie? It's true, it's true. You better know who the hell is Eddie Jobson and have a Brit wit like Emma Thompson. You can use irony to cut and slay, and you can have chunky glasses like Tina Fey. You better like films by Kurosawa. You better stay naked outside the shower. Better ding, dang, dingle for over an hour, then calculate binomials to the tenth power. So sexy. Brains, body bone. Brains, body bone. She can make my wick stick out my candle. She knows which one's hiding and which one's handle. So honey, put on a dress that barely fits. And then shake your ass. And show me your wits. Thank you. If we can remove the cup from the, from the dingus over there. International butterfly. 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 Farfalla. Farfalla. Mariposa. Mariposa. Kupu kupu. Kupu kupu. Birhunen. Birhunen. Bilam bilut. Blam bilut. Cho cho. Cho cho. Pin plim pausa. Pin plim pausa. Fluture. Fluture. Bolboreta. Bolboreta. Papillon. Papillon. Schmetterling! International Butterfly. Okay. I'm going to teach you a song. Woohoo! It's called Far. That is the chorus. I don't know why I'm talking like a scene from Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> you're gonna be okay! Yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. He's a good kid. This is a song that I was asked to write a theme song for uh, the 365 Days of Astronomy podcast. And uh, the only rule they gave me was it can't sound like Enya. <laughs> and I said, oh. I minored in not sounding like Enya, so this is perfect. Here's how the chorus goes. I say, the little, the little writing is me, the big writing is you. I say, this stuff is far, and you say, it's really far. This stuff is far, far, far away, and we're talking far, like uber far. You can't get there by car in a day, it's super duper crazy, probably not just pulsars, quasars and stars, I mean it's far, far, far. If there's some doubt, listen to a shout, this stuff is far. Very good, let's try it once to kind of stretch and get in the zone, and then we'll do it for real. Ready? This stuff is far. 
This stuff is far, far, far away. We're talking far. You can't get there by car in a day. It's super duper crazy. Probably not just false stars, queen stars, and stars. I mean, it's far, far, far. If there's some doubt, just do a shout. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. So the chorus comes right at the chorus, like all good choruses often do. You ponder the universe and a look comes across your face. You try to fathom distances of all the stuff in space. But you can't wrap the bacon of your mind around the fig of all the terms required to describe how big is big. So let me get specific and use words scientific. Go whip out your thesaurus. For this exacting chorus, ready? This stuff is far. This stuff is far, far, far away. We're talking far. You can't get there by car in a day. It's super duper crazy. Probably not just pull stars, quasars, and stars. I mean, it's far, far, far. If there's some doubt, listen to a shout. I sense all the explosions going off inside your brain As your mind gets blown by what I just did explain Sorry if my words might drive you all insane But that's what happens when precision is your middle name So with an exacting factor Like some sextant or protractor Using details quite semantic We'll show how huge is this gigantic This stuff is far This stuff is far, far, far away We're talking far you can't get there by car in a day. It's super duper crazy. Probably not just pulse stars, queen stars, and stars. I mean, it's far, far, far. If there's some doubt, listen to a shout. Far too big to explain in any concise way. It might just have to take 365 days. I hope that I have offered up some technical assistance. Haven't caused your ticker too much ventricular resistance But you have got to listen and trust my insistence That I am really accurately describing the distance Really accurately describing the distance Held within the pleasure dome Decreed by Kubla Khan Rush fans, nerds, awesome How was high school for you? Going through some changes, never be the same. Something you did touch me, you showed how far was the game. Ready? This stuff is far. This stuff is far, far, far away. We're talking far. You can't get there by car in a day. It's super duper crazy. Probably not just Paul Stars, Quasars, and Stars. I mean, it's far, far, far. If there's some doubt, listen to a shout. Pretty damn far. Yeah! Nicely done. Excellent. All right, how are we doing? Here? Cool. Can we cover that back up for a, for a little? Oh, wonderful. High tech. <laughs> the cup. Um, there was a gentleman that asked a question earlier about the atheist death panel. Is that gentleman still here? Is, are you st I don't want to embarrass you. Just, you just had an awesome accent. Are you still here? Oh, fuck. That would have been so cool to use him because he had the coolest accent. Is he, he's, I'm not, I, honestly, I don't want to embarrass you. I just want to, I just, he was, he was up there somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Let's do this. Who, who, has, who has traveled the farthest, would you say, out of this room? Who has traveled the farthest? Anyone traveled like uber far? Because <laughs> it's like the song. Uh, how far? Florida. Who can be Florida? California. California. Who can be California? Yeah? Shanghai? Get your ass up here. Okay, can you read English? You can read English, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> that was a good Shanghai look. It's like, yeah, fucker, I can read English. <laughs> so come on up. Okay. No, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You've traveled the farther away you were. All right. Let us just confer for one sec. So what you're going to do is we are going to do the further stuff. All you have to do is we can uncover the thing, right? 
So. I'm not very good at reading without laughing. That's fine. That's part of the thing. What's your name, brother? Mark. Mark from Shanghai, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm not from Shanghai. No, no, you arrived from Shanghai. You flew from. Oh, you're not from Shanghai. No, no, no. Oh, I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have figured it. Because that plaid is more of a Korean kind of. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So uh, this is the Twitter song. These are, this is from my Twitter feed. I have a Twitter feed, Twitter slash George Rob. Um, and these are actual tweets that I did. And uh, this is the custom made Twitter song uh, as performed by Mark, not from Shanghai, but who arrived from Shanghai. All right. All right, but full disclosure, I totally misunderstood your question. I traveled here from Chicago. I thought you were asking who has traveled the farthest, like on vacation or something. Oh, Mark. So I'm very sorry. You know sorry. what? Mark was honest, so we're going to give it to him. All right? So here we go. Here it is. So nice and clear. And then here we go. Do the, it up. The Twitter song for Skepticon 5. Intelligent design is science the same way the two books are a library. <laughs> you always get very zen applause. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. <laughs> Is there a Mrs. Mark? Can someone help him? Yeah. All right, here we go. All right. All right. Focus, focus. I thought socialized medicine was what you gave to agoraphobics. How do you decide when to use impulse power? I don't know, you just sort of do. I'm surprised no one has manufactured a wood glue called Crucifer. Keep going, keep going, yeah. You're doing good. You're doing just good. so you know, cerebral fluid is not the booze you drink just before you spout your opinion. Went hiking last week and took the wrong equipment. So while I couldn't find north, at least I could draw a perfect <laughs> Unfortunately, when the power went out at the Renaissance Festival, there was much loot. <laughs> there are no absolutes. I'm donating my body to science. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do this. Whenever Mark starts laughing, you finish it. Okay? So when he can't finish it, you all finish it. All right? Here we go. Try it again. All right. Awkward. A Neanderthal just called me a homo. <laughs> you can cut off a starfish's limb, and not only will it grow back, but that fucker will never mouth up to you again. Why is talent God-given, but cancer isn't? I wonder if Riker is ever tempted to reply, it's complicated, when Picard asks for a staff support. <laughs> The cup that Jesus used at the Last Supper is like the holy grail of archaeology. In Spain, soy sauce is confidently self-aware. <laughs> Anyone who makes an ad hominem attack is like Hitler. <laughs> A collection of butt plugs could be called an arse. <laughs> If I were an alcoholic, I'd join the army just to see him <laughs> avoiding the draft. Yeah! We knew it would happen eventually. There is no I in Tim. No, wait. There's, there's definitely an I in Tim. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Defending creationism with laws of thermodynamics is like flipping letters to make your sign look Russian. It's just annoying to those who know better. <laughs> I want to set my phone to vibrate, but I'm not sure if we're ready for that. <laughs> Mar so yeah, good. Never try to rob a paper store with a safe gun. <laughs> you can, however, threaten a homeopath with a bomb. 
house divided against itself gives Frank Gehry a massive boner. <laughs> Any sufficiently advanced graffiti is indistinguishable from magic marker. <laughs> My cat's publicist works for a PR arf. <laughs> Headline, surgery leaves Phil Collins unable to play drums. Oh, sure, <laughs> blame the surgery. There's 300 more of these, by the way, just so you know. My stepladder insists that I call him ladder. It just doesn't feel right. <laughs> There is no lotion that will prevent sun worshippers from getting burnt. I don't think I get that one. I'll get it later, probably. The only way I'll get my palm red is by slapping Sylvia Brown in the face. I think a more secure Iron Man could call it himself female. <laughs> People that cry at weddings have I do. <clears throat> Remember, someone talking about ruins is often historical. Someone talking about ruins is always hysterical. <laughs> Anyone who subscribes to Dad Magazine has father issues. Having my lamp rubbed is one of my wishes. <laughs> Orangina is not quite the two tastes I imagined. I just realized a kite is like a reverse skylight. The movie Prometheus makes Attack of the Clones look like a Star Wars film. <laughs> Was Captain Hook's surname Hook before he lost his hand? Because that would be really creepy. <laughs> And finally, unfinished an analogy is to incomplete comparison. <laughs> Give it up for Mark, ladies and gentlemen! God bless. You're a good sport, man. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, that could be the best one we've ever done. My God. Awesome. Uh, my good question. There it is. Um, yeah, uh, Facebook also, you can do that there. But uh, I got time for just a couple little more things. I just want to do, I want to do one. This actually came up earlier and I thought it was perfect. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the, I'm kind of the sorbet of these skeptical events. I'm sort of the, you know, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a, I'm not an official uh, speaker person. I'm kind of the jokester guy who does a couple little silly things in between. But um, I've written one particular song we can cover that up if you want. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Cool. Um, we as non-believers, we as people of reason, we as people, I assume most of us here probably don't believe in an afterlife, don't believe in some kind of God. If you do, that's totally cool. You are completely welcome. It's, it's not, that's not the question. Um, but I think for the majority of us at an event like this, do not believe in an afterlife. And it's very easy to kind of have that belief. And it's very easy to sort of hold that because it just makes so much more sense when you really think about it. Uh, carefully, when you think about it, sort of uh, using all your faculties of reason, the idea of an afterlife just doesn't make mathematical sense. And yet, when we lose someone close to us, when someone passes away, it puts into question and puts into spin all of the logic and all of the reason, and it makes us take a moment and sometimes pine for the possibilities of something. I had a boxer whose name was Oscar. He was the coolest dog ever. He was the first pet I ever had. I had him for eight and a half years. Uh, was madly in love with this dog. He was just, as any pet owner knows, you, these guys crawl into your hearts and they just sort of, it is the closest you will ever get to unconditional love. Humans have all kinds of conditions. I don't care what people say, there are always conditions. Uh, and animals love pretty much is unconditional and it's pretty amazing when you manage to hook up with, a, with an animal that's just special. And Oscar got cancer and we, ha we, had to, we had to put him to sleep and it was horrible. And I was very, very tempted to imagine my guy in puppy heaven. 
you know, where the squirrels run really slow. <laughs> like really slow. And I caught myself and I said, no, damn it, this is my foxhole moment. This is the closest I will ever get to being an atheist in a foxhole, in that the chips are down and I gotta have my A game here. Now let's think about this. Yes, in the moment, it would be nice to picture him running through massive fields with trees that have dog biscuits on them and, and like I said, these slow-running squirrels. But what does that mean, ultimately? What does that mean? He's waiting for me. He's wondering where I am. He misses me. Is there some simulacrum of me playing with him? Is there someone else playing with him? Does he think I abandoned him? Does he still have his personality traits? Does he still occasionally pee inside? which is adorable in its own way, annoyingly adorable, like any animal's traits are. And all of these things bug me, and I thought, no, damn it, I'm not gonna fall into that idea of the rainbow bridge. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna satisfy my temporary need for a salve by getting rid of the, all the things that I believe and the logic, and, the, and not even the things I believe, the things that I can deduce. And we as atheists, we as non-believers, we don't often talk about this subject. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting one, it's a delicate one, and it's something that affects everyone because at some point you will lose someone special. You will lose someone in your life. We will all lose our parents. We will all lose loved ones. It's inevitable. And I think we need to sort of think about it. And the, and the only solace I managed to find, and I ended up writing a song to kind of, this is, that's what I do. When I don't know what to do with myself, I end up writing songs. And it took a long time because everything I wrote was trite and was just shit. Until I latched onto this idea that in Oscar's final moments, in the last seconds of his life, when his eyes were closing, he thought he felt really bad, he felt tired, he maybe thought he was gonna go to sleep for a little bit, and that we, he would wake up and we'd go for a walk, or I would brush him or we would give him dinner or whatever. And that's his eternity in that final second. And that my responsibility is to feel the pain and feel the hole, not his. He's done. The synapses have stopped firing, and he no longer exists as a sentient being. And I wouldn't want him to miss me. I wouldn't want loved ones that pass on to worry about me. I have this argument with my mother all the time. My mom's a Catholic. I was raised a Catholic. She's a wonderful, logical person who has just had this Catholicism implanted inside of her. And I say, you're going to be in heaven and you're going to be watching me? Like, ew. How are you going to get any kind of rest until I'm dead next to you? <laughs> so I thought, in that final moment, I'm glad that I have to have this burden of having a hole in my heart and not you. And it wasn't a lot of comfort, but it was a little bit of comfort. So I ended up writing this song, and this is called Small Comfort. I don't believe in heaven I know that there's no hell I don't think you've gone anywhere I guess that's just as well Cause I want to remember The last look in your eye It was the best and worst thing to get to say goodbye to you. They say we're not supposed to comprehend, but I want to know more being there with you at the end was a pain I had hoped for. Did you know where you were going? Did you like the time you spent? I wish that you'd stayed longer But that's not how it went Now I know there's no forever But of all the hearts I've met I think the place we ended up 
was as close as one could get to Jew. They say we're not supposed to understand, but that doesn't help me watching you leave by my own hand where the cards that were dealt me some would blame the dealer some would blame the deal some would make up stories that never could be real i know when you left you were glad to be back home i think that you knew you would never be alone i've no need for heaven or some eternal bluff I prefer what's real and what we had here was enough I'm glad I get to miss you but that you can never miss me Thinking you'll wake up and see us is your eternity It's a small comfort I miss you, I miss you, I love Thank you, you're very kind, thank you, thank you. Now we can't end with that. <laughs> But let's talk about it. Let's talk about it when we're gathering together at the bar and stuff. Let's, uh, let's talk about it. One more song for you folks. This is also off my latest album, which I have copies of. If you want interested, come on up. They're 10 bucks a piece. Uh, I'll be up front here. Come see me. I think they'll have them at the table later on uh, for the rest of the weekend, too. I'm around all weekend. I'd love to meet all you guys, and let's chat. That's what this is about. This is so fantastic to be able to just converse and talk and, and exchange ideas and, and you know compare shoe sizes or whatever we want to do. It's totally fine. This is, uh, this is a song about nerds falling in love. This is called Never Knew. Never knew why apples were worth bobbing. I never knew what Batman saw in Robin. I never knew why Gene insisted on sitting while getting wet. I never knew how Will Rogers liked every single man he met. But now it's true because of you. I do. I never knew how Sherlock could be so good at solving. I never knew how Chuck could just observe and come up with evolving. I never knew why zombies had such a taste for brains. I never knew why High Plains drifters insisted on drifting while high on the plains. But now it's true because of you I do I do I never knew how Laird could dive headfirst into 30 foot swells I never knew how the professor could make so much stuff out of coconut shells I never knew how gamblers on a winning streak could assume that they'd never lose I never knew why the sides of a right triangle equal the square of the sides of the hypotenuse. But now it's true because of you. Despite my situation of unending frustration, it seems my education is affected by your location. It's true. I never knew how much I never knew. I never knew what rhymed with orange. That's till you asked me to fix that squeaky door hinge. So now it's true because of you, I do.
do. I never knew when I didn't know, cause I didn't know if I'd ever get to know when I never knew. It's true. I never knew when I didn't know, cause I didn't know if I'd ever get to know when I never knew. Till you. I never knew when I didn't know, cause I didn't know if I'd ever get to know when I never knew. It's true. I never knew when I didn't know, cause I didn't know if I'd ever get to know when I never, ever, never, ever knew. You know? My name is George Robb. Thank you so much for hanging out. Let's go have a drink. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.